Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Terry. I'm a Philippine travel guide. You know me. In this video, I'm going to focus on foreign nationals, foreign tourists. This is the updated latest travel guide to the Philippines. First off, I'm not going to talk about anything COVID related. Cards, tests, that's history. We don't need all, any of that. But there are still people who ask me. Believe me, there are still people who ask for it. So we will just comply with immigration and custom requirements. For, for that, there are four things that you need to prepare to satisfy immigration. Passport must be at least six months valid. We don't, we don't want you with passports that are near expiration. Next is visa, if applicable. Return or onward ticket. And then e-travel QR code. That's it. Four things. I want to go back to visa right if applicable now most of you who are watching do not need a visa to travel to the philippines we have visa free entry privileges i'm only going to talk about the executive order 408 in which most of you are covered so if you are a national of any of these countries you hold a passport of any of these countries, you may enter the Philippines visa-free and stay here for 30 days. There are 157 countries on this list. So initial entry, you get free for 30 days. If you want to extend, oh yeah, you can extend up to three years. Yes, you just have to extend like every two months. So first extension is one month, and then after that, you can do it every two months, up to three years. Yes. <laughs> uh, born in the USA as he, uh, he was in the Philippines last October, and he wants to go again in December. He wants to ask if he can still avail the 30 days visa-free stay. Yes, so every time you enter the country, you get the 30 days. Furthermore, uh, Israeli and Brazilian passport holders, they can stay visa-free for 59 days. Hong Kong and Macau nationals for 14 days. Then Indian nationals, they usually need a visa, but if they're holding certain visas of well, certain countries, they can also enter visa-free, but for 14 days. So majority of you guys, majority of nationals don't really need a visa to enter the Philippines. Only people on this list, they're non-negotiables, they're called visa required nationals what they need is a 9a visa or a tourist visa so this is the fees for any one of you who are watching visa required national forty dollars for three for valid for three months it means valid for three months it doesn't mean a stay of three months now going back to our list you have your passport Visa, but most of you don't need a visa, so scratch that. Three is a return or onward ticket, except for like buy-ins. So do you really need a return or onward ticket? Does it have to be within 30 days? Can I come in with just a one-way ticket? It really depends on your airline. If the airline insists or asks you for a return ticket, then you gotta comply. Actually, the law says visa-free nationals need a return or onward ticket within their allowed stay. So, it is actually the law for you to have a return or onward ticket. But I know that there are airlines that won't even ask or they don't care how long your return ticket is. So, airline is king. Different people have different experiences. There are those who say that they were never asked for a return ticket. Some say, oh, I was never allowed boarding without a return ticket. I would say it all depends on your airline. Immigration in the Philippines, they're not very strict about this. As long as you can extend your stay, not overstay, you'll, you're fine. Immigration's not so strict, especially if you have a good record. <laughs> An onward or return ticket is a must. Look, if you're coming to the Philippines and you don't have an end date on when you're leaving, I would suggest, to say, renting an onward ticket or buying a cheap budget throwaway ticket or book a refundable ticket. That's the options. For me, the best and most convenient one is the onward ticket. It's just $16. It's valid for 48 hours. So as soon as that ticket is valid upon check-in, then you're fine. I've recommended them to a lot of travelers and they've always worked. And I have tried them myself. So we have our passport, we have our visa, we have our return or onward ticket. Next is e-travel QR code. This has replaced the arrival card. So no need to do the paper card. We have the electronic form. It's called e-travel. 
and you can access this site through etravel.gov.ph this is the only site guys there are scam websites out there don't don't look at this uh, address domain it should have .gov.ph you can do this three days before your flight register and um, once you have successfully registered you will get a QR code and this QR code will be asked by your airline upon checked in upon arrival in the Philippines they will no longer ask for it because it is connected with your passport once the immigration officer scans your passport then they will know that yeah this person has registered to e-travel and we have the um, necessary information in e-travel, you will be asked about your personal profile, name, country of birth, contact info, address, where are you staying in the Philippines, is it in a hotel, a residence, so yeah. It's pretty straightforward. I've made a tutorial guide on how to register. I'll put the link down below. If you've registered before and you still have a record of your registration, you can use that. Okay, you can um, look it up on your email. You should have a copy on your email and use that old registration and put in a number there on the website so you only have to update your flight details. Now moving on, let's go to customs. Guys, Philippine customs is pretty lenient. You know, just avoid restricted and prohibited items or regulated goods. So for example, do not bring fruits and vegetables meat okay if you're gonna carry these things agricultural products you need a permit other things like pornographic materials they're called contrabands don't bring them here anything that would incite treason or abortion nope um, if you've got items don't try to um, put them you know sometimes like bottles they can be heavy so we put them in a plastic bag instead don't keep it in its original container yeah, misbranded items can also be confiscated. As for nationals, you guys are not are prohibited by having any opinion about Philippine politics. So do not engage in rallies or whatever. Don't post anything on Facebook. As a foreign national, your opinion about Philippine politics is I have no comment. Okay. <laughs> also don't bring in any counterfeit goods. We have plenty here. Joke yeah you get it don't bring that all travelers bringing in goods with a value of less than 10,000 pesos or $200 shall not pay any duties and taxes if you're by thinking about carrying tobacco then be reminded that you're only allowed two rims of cigarettes or 50 sticks of cigars whilst for alcohol two bottles of liquor with a total value of 10,000 pesos or less for medicine, this is important. You guys can bring in your medicine, but you should bring a letter from your physician stating the condition for which they are receiving treatment and the dosage with English translation. So bring your prescription with you. The amount of drugs that you will be bringing into the country should just be enough for the duration of your stay. Whereas for money, this is the kind of problem that I want to have. If you're carrying more than 10,000 US dollars, you'd have to declare it. $10,000 or less, no need to declare it. Whilst if you're bringing in your dollars with you to exchange and to use it here, make sure they are new, they're crisp, they don't, they're not torn, they're not old dollar bills because it is likely that they won't be accepted by bunny exchange here. So during check-in, let's just a quick summary. You have your passport, you have your e-travel, and you have your return or onward ticket. Now upon arrival, they will only ask for your passport. The immigration officer might ask how long you're staying or what's your purpose of stay. If you have a connecting domestic flight and you're, you have landed in Naia, your domestic flight will be in Naia Terminal 2. If you're in a different terminal, which you will be, don't worry. There are transfers, airport shuttle buses that operate 24-7. It's free if you have a connecting flight. Now, you, you need to pick up your luggage to go through customs. And after that, you can go to the transfer desk to leave your luggage. Now, if Manila is your final destination, there are transportation options. There are taxis, coupon, yellow meter taxis, regular metered taxis. These uh, transportations are cash payments, so make sure you have Philippine cash with you. You can exchange some at the airport, some amount, um, but make sure that well, cash is used everywhere in the Philippines. Cash is king here, so make sure you always have Philippine, Philippine pesos with you. 
while the other option is you can download ride hailing services you can use their service there's grab there's joyride but you have to I would recommend to install these apps prior to arriving to the country if you don't have internet the internet at the airport is not so much reliable I can also recommend Manila Airport drivers that I've known Kuya Johnny, Kuya Rainier I'll have their um, Facebook contact in the comment section if you guys want to contact them they've been used by many travelers and I can vouch for them if you need an internet where you can buy a Philippine sim at the airport but expect that they will be overpriced usually a sim Philippine sim only costs 50 pesos 100 pesos 150 pesos but if you buy them at the airport they will include plans in it it will cost 1500 or 1000 pesos very expensive when I'm traveling now I usually just buy an eSIM with data I find that the most convenient it would it would be pricier than buying the Philippine sim with data in the Philippines but I, if you're just there for a short time I don't think it's worth registering for a sim if you're if you want to consider getting an eSIM I would recommend Maya eSIM they have one that's for 10 days for 15 days and then there's 30 days um, it's a bit pricey but they're reliable and they are connected with Globe which is one of the biggest telecommunications company in the Philippines there's one that's for 30 days for $59 but yeah so that's just an option you guys credit card debit cards visa and mastercard are widely accepted in the philippines check if your bank is part of a fee-free one network otherwise you might be paying charges withdrawing in the philippines there are atms everywhere once you hit smaller towns you'll find atms will be few and far between and you're far more likely to find that many stores restaurants and guest houses prefer cash payments so cash is king here again you should always have philippine cash with you and as for driving you can rent a car here you can use your license as, do as long as they're in english and they're valid you can use them for 90 days so that's uh, my travel guide for the philippines guys i hope this was helpful and if it was please leave a like on the video leave a comment if you have anything to add and i will see you again with another guide bye